Hello and welcome. You're watching UAT News with me, Ksenia Buhai. Let's start with the latest developments. From now on, European airlines will be able to operate domestic flights in Ukraine. And this is not only a guarantee of the safety of passengers, but also an important factor in reducing ticket prices. The agreement was signed in the framework of the 23rd Ukraine-EU summit, which took place in Kiev on October 12th. Watch more details on other important statements made during the meeting. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky called on the European colleagues during the 23rd Ukraine-EU summit to impose sanctions against the organizers of elections to the Russian state Duma in the occupied Crimea and the temporarily uncontrolled territories of Donbass. Everyone who took part in organizing and holding elections to the state Duma of the Russian Federation in the occupied Crimea and the city of Sevastopol and in the temporarily occupied territories of Donbass should be included in the sanctions list. Systematic violations of human rights in the temporarily occupied Crimean Peninsula should not be ignored either. Volodymyr Zelensky noted that earlier this week he discussed the situation in Donbass as well as preparations for the next Normandy 4 summit with French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Together with the EU, we share the opinion that the responsibility for the lack of progress in the peace settlement in Donbass lies entirely with Russia, which is undoubtedly a party to the conflict. Charles Michel Michel, president of the European Council, welcomed Ukraine's adoption of a strategy for the occupation and reintegration of the Crimean Peninsula. Crimean platform, in his opinion, is an important tool for the consolidation of international support for the deoccupation of the peninsula. We condemn the illegal occupation of Crimea and Sevastopol. Be sure that you are supported by 27 countries, in particular in the Crimean Platform Initiative. We constantly reaffirm our support for the sovereignty and independence of Ukraine. Russia should fully assume its responsibility as the country that takes a direct part in the hostilities in the Donbass, stressed the President of the European Commission. And we call on Russia to assume its responsibility as a party to the conflict. As a follow-up to the Crimea platform, we have sent our own personnel to southeastern Ukraine to get a known picture of it, so that they can see how to best address the needs of the communities affected by the conflict. Ukraine and the EU will step up joint work on the release of 450 Ukrainians who are being illegally held in Russia, occupied Crimea and in the territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions, temporarily uncontrolled by Ukraine. In turn, Volodymyr Zelensky noted that energy security is a guarantee of Ukraine's sovereignty and the completion of the construction of Nord Stream 2 poses new challenges for our country. Today we discussed the possibility of using third energy package for Nord Stream 2 Two and a separate sanctions policy in relation to this gas pipeline. The leaders of the European Union noted that they understand the concern of Ukraine in the gas issue. Therefore, a strategic energy dialogue between Ukraine and the European Union will start in the nearest future. Therefore, the Commission, together with Ukrainian experts, is exploring right now different scenarios to secure sufficient supply for Ukraine. We will also work closely with you, with Ukraine, in order to increase gas supply capacity coming from member states of the European Union. And this also includes the option of working on arrangements to reverse the flow of an additional gas pipeline from Slovakia. According to the head of the European Commission, there are several areas of work, the transit of gas through the territory of Ukraine and income from it, the security of gas supplies and the strategic capabilities of gas storage facilities. At the same time, the main weapon against Russia's gas blackmail remains energy independence, which is as important for Ukraine as it is for the EU. Reported by Nick Starkov, Yulia Granovska for U8 News. The date of the meeting of the foreign ministers of the Normandy format is unknown. This was stated by Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba. According to him, Ukrainian, French and German ministers are ready to negotiate 
although Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov does not make contact, the French president announced that the meeting of the heads of diplomatic departments will take place in the nearest future. To remind, on Monday, the meeting in the Normandy format was discussed by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. If the result of the last conversation of the French president with the German chancellor and the Russian president is still a clear instruction from President Putin to Minister Lavrov to take part in the ministerial meeting and he will do this and not find a reason to avoid this meeting again, I will be glad. I'm ready for this conversation. Therefore, we are waiting for the actual signal from Moscow. An innovating Crimean hub and unique art object with the sounds of the Crimean Peninsula. All this can be seen on the territory of the Office of the Crimean Platform in Kiev. In addition to sightseeing tour, the office staff also spoke about their achievements. Details next. Entering the office of the Crimean platform, we are struck by such wonderful works of the Crimean artists. In every room of the main office, there is a piece of Crimean Crimean Tatars. These are the photos of the Russian journalist Anton Naumluk, who now lives in Kyiv. These are all his work. Here we can see the family of political prisoners Server Zakiraev, who has 13 children. He is imprisoned for a long term, 13 years for a crime he didn't commit. Several dozen people walk in the office of the Crimean platform. They advise citizens on a daily basis, interact with Ukrainian authorities, international organizations and other partner countries. I want to draw your attention to a beautiful map of Ukraine and a map of our Crimea. There are already certain results on the internal track that we can talk about. In particular, on the 27th of September this year, the president of Ukraine submitted to the parliament of Ukraine as an urgent draft, the law on the protection of people whose freedom was restricted as a result of armed aggression against Ukraine. This is exactly the law on the protection of political prisoners and their families. This is one of the draft laws of the Crimean platform package. Now we hope for its successful passage in the parliament and successful adoption. The Crimean hub is located on the territory of the office in which representatives of the displaced Crimean authorities walk. They hold joint receptions of citizens and events on the topic of of the occupation and reintegration of Crimea with the participation of national and international experts. The sounds of the Crimea are now heard in the very center of Kiev, near the office of the Crimean platform. Such an art object has been installed, near which you can hear the sound of the sea, the cry of seagulls. This sculpture was created using an unusual technology. The experts asked the indigenous Crimeans about what sound they associate Crimea with and then they rearranged the audio tracks into a three-dimensional form and they painted them in the colors of the Crimean landscape. Memories of Crimea were also recorded on film. It has a historical value and affects us not as visual content, but is something that draws our attention to sounds more, especially for a thinking person. Starting next month, everyone will be able to see the art object and hear the sounds of Crimea by first registering on the website of the Ukrainian platform. If you wish, you can also take a tour of the main office, reported by Vlada Zurkan, UATV News. Lyudmila Denisova, Commissioner for Human Rights of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, called on international partners to intensify sanctions pressure on Russia due to the persecution of Crimean Tatars and the occupied Crimea. On the eve, the occupation court of the peninsula fined seven people detained on October 11th. Together with dozens of other people, they came to the building of the occupying Crimean military court in the city of Simferopol, there by Video link, they watch an appeal against the illegal verdict of Eskandar Abdul Ghaniyev, Harsen Abhairov, and Rustem Emirsuinov. That day, Russian security forces detained 20 people.
In this way, the aggressor continues to put pressure on the Crimean Tatars in the temporarily occupied Crimea for defending their civil position. By such actions, the occupying country violates Article 10 of the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, according to which everyone has the right to freedom of expression. This right includes inter alia the freedom to hold opinions and ideas without interference from public authorities and regardless of borders. Lyudmila Denisova a Commissioner for Human Rights of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. More than 1,000 violations and 480,000 U.S. dollars in fines. The State Ecological Inspectorate of Ukraine conducts a massive inspection of gas stations throughout the country. Thus, it is planned to improve the quality of fuel and reduce the impact of harmful emissions into the atmosphere. Watch more details in the following report. It sounds obvious, but this pistol should not kill. However, low-quality fuel in it annually causes physical damage to millions of Ukrainians. The cause of 95% of all toxic emissions into the atmosphere in the capital is automobile emissions. A similar situation is in other large cities. The State Environmental Inspectorate believes that fuel quality control will correct the situation. During this year, within the framework of market surveillance, we carried out about 900 measures of state control, discovered over 1,400 violations and applied administrative and economic sanctions in the amount of more than 13 million hymnus. At the first stage, the documentation is checked. If violations are found, they go with an inspection. Such a raid is carried out without warning. Investigate all the indicators that are in the technical regulations, especially the presence of sulfur, the level of oxygen-containing compounds, the proportion of benzene, the amount of impurities and bioethanol. For humans, this is fraught with lung diseases, hematopoietic diseases and other diseases. Diseases. Experts take fuel for laboratory analysis. Until the results of the study are received, the work of the network is suspended, and if the fuel does not pass the test, the license for the corresponding type of fuel is revoked until the problem is resolved. For a high-quality examination, it is necessary to make several samples of fuel from different levels in accordance with the size of the tank. For example, right now samples are being taken from the lower and middle levels. According to the eco-inspection, a surrogate is found in one of seven cases. This amount of counterfeit causes particular discontent among drivers. When refueling with low-quality fuel, detonation can occur. This could damage the motor. Of course, this is terrible, and I would like to fill up with normal fuel, with all the certificates. All of these oil companies are making money off of us, this whole terrible oil industry. Therefore, it is high time for us to switch to alternative energy resources. At the moment, fuel samples have been taken at 30 gas stations of different companies, but by the end of the year it is planned to carry out 300 such checks. Their results will be entered into an open registry, which will start working in the coming months. This will raise public awareness and open up opportunities for civilian oversight. Reported by Nick Starkov, Danilo Kobza for UATV News. The exhibition of unique military developments, Digital Future of the Army, kicked off in Kiev. The exhibits will be displayed on Mikhailivska Square until October 17th. Scout drones, bomber robots, smart rescue vehicles, modernized fighting vehicles. The exhibition was organized by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Most of the exhibits are made in Ukraine. Anyone can feel like a soldier. Visitors of all ages are allowed to get into combat vehicles. BMP can swim, shoot, launch rockets. I like it very much because there are a lot of armored vehicles here. We see the BMP-1 vehicle. It began production in the 60th, but at the moment the machine has been modernized. It is produced by the Zhitomir armored plant. The range of this gun is up to 4 kilometers, aimed fire 1,200 meters. The main difference is that the previous cannon was charged from the above, but now from the inside. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter pages.